everyone welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to do my beauty bank update i am making a few changes to this video i'm still going to run through all the makeup that i bought this month and any pans that i have hit and also my beauty bank numbers but i wanted to use this video as a way to also discuss some other things so every month i kind of want to go through maybe what eyeshadow i use the most i also want to go through if I have any favorites of that month, I will run through them, so long as it's not a huge amount. This month today, I only have four items to go through that are like my favorites, and they're not all makeup. Actually, only one of them is makeup, but they are beauty related. I also want to add towards the end of the video, because I'm sure some people won't care, but I want to talk about like TV shows I'm watching and my quick thoughts on them, and also any movies that I watched this month. I am on Letterboxd and I'm trying to be uh, a little bit more. I don't know, organized in terms of my thoughts on things like that. And what better way to wrap up the month than to talk about certain things in the media. So I want to talk about that and also maybe what songs I'm listening to, artists I'm listening to on Spotify because I listen to a lot of music every single month. So yeah, we'll do that at the end of the video. Let's get into the standard stuff. I have switched around my room and I'm still playing around with the lighting as well. So if it's a little bit off today, bear with me. I actually have moved my desk completely. My desk used to be over there in the corner. That corner is empty now. Um, you still kind of see the same background. It's a little bit different. I'm sitting in a different space. I have a beauty sort of desk now. And my, my actual like office desk is over here. So I'm hoping to put, I mean, this has nothing to do with anything, but I'm hoping to put a futon here so that we can eventually, when we have people come over, they can sleep there and I don't have to sit in a room with a bed that basically is empty all year long. So anyway, <laughs> that's, what, that's, what, that's what I did this, that's what I did today. Basically moved my whole room around. So I'm a bit tired, my nails are all fried and like everything is like chipped, but let's go through it. I did buy quite a lot of makeup this month. I did travel, I went to England and I just bought some makeup. I didn't even buy expensive makeup. I bought everything is drugstore very very affordable items but I still bought it so let's go through that first I did end the uh the last month on a negative 16 points so actually for the whole of 2023 I bought 67 makeup items I was looking at my notes and I bought 67 makeup items and this month I bought a whopping 10 I bought 10 makeup items crazy amount. And they're all small too. None of them are eyeshadow though. I mean, I know in December I bought a lot of eyeshadow, so that's why my points just went down, down, down. But yeah. Oh gosh, I'm not starting off the year very well. I'm not on a no buy. I am somewhat on a low buy. However, I'm not going to be very strict with myself evidently. So the first item I want to talk about is this one. I picked this up I don't even know what, where I got this, probably Superdrug or some other place. So Sky High Mascara, I've tried the original. This is just the super like jet black one. So that one is actually the only new item that I have yet to try because it's mascara, I don't want to open it up. I did buy two things from Primark, one of which I think I've spoken about quite a bit. Uh, I spoke about it in my shop, my stash, and it is the Prep and Perfect Primer. This is supposed to be the Bobbi Brown dupe. It's what they were trying to imitate. I think it's a, I think it's great. I really love this product. I've used it so much this month. Um, I mean, so much. I've had it a month, but you can see I've really definitely gone in there. Yeah, like I'm going to, I'm going to be done with this <laughs> before I know it. And I've just pulled it over from my shop, my stash. So I'm definitely going to be using it over the next month as well. But yeah, really, really nice. Got it for £2.50. So super pleased with that. Not that £4.50 is very expensive, but yeah, it was the January sales. And I was like, okay, fine. Uh, why not? I wanted, to, I've always wanted to try it out anyway, because I have the Bobbi Brown and I love my Bobbi Brown. But it's so expensive. So yeah, I wish I'd bought a few more of these because it actually is really nice. And then I also got this from Primark. This is a blush. It's a coral blush. You know, I love me my coral blushes. And this one is really nice too. So it is a win-win for me in terms of uh, Primark so far. This is a matte blush. The finish is beautiful. It's not patchy. It is the perfect color on my skin. I love it. And this was £1.50. So... 
I think I did very well. Anyway, moving on, I did buy quite a lot of lip products. They're all from Maybelline. I got another lifter gloss. I already have two of them. I have, I wouldn't be able to, like Ice. I think one of them is called Ice and the other one's called Amber. Maybe I have three of them. Oh, I think I have three others actually. The other one I don't really remember. I don't really like the other one. It's more of a movie pink. This is more of a nude pink and it's like a true nude. I think this is much better than the other pink that I have and this is the stone shade and I have tried this and I do like it. I also got three other vinyl inks. This is the liquid lipstick formula. I like these. I got these two first and then I went and bought this one because I liked these ones. So I tried all three of these. I got Peppy and I have Peachy and then this red one is Wicked. So yeah, I actually do really like all three of these. I just hate that they put these stickers here. So like they're all sticky now. So that's really annoying. Anyway, next up, I did also buy a few other random bits. I got one uh, setting spray from Technique. This is the Magic Mist Illuminating Setting Spray. Love it. I think it's really nice. And then I've got the Maybelline 4-in-1 Glow Perfector. I wanted to try it for a while. Finally picked it up. I don't know what it does. I like it, but I don't know what it is. What is it for? I kind of use it as like a glowy highlighter type thing. I don't think it, I mean, I guess it could be a primer, but there's, it really doesn't, I mean, you definitely need to put stuff on it. So yeah, I would probably use it as a primer, a highlighter, um, not so much a concealer, although I have tracked it as a concealer in my inventory. So I don't know, I'm just a little big of that liar, I think. And then I also picked up the Milani Conceal and Perfect Concealer, because why not? I don't know, I don't know why. I don't have a good reason why I bought that. I just bought it. So, oh, you know why I bought it? I actually took the e.l.f. hydrating uh, concealer with me to England when I was traveling and it just, just was so, so light and pale. I wanted to pick up another one because I just wasn't enjoying how it was looking. I'm not sure if I like that one so far. So, uh, and I already have a lot of concealers. But anyway, those are all of the items that I brought into my collection this last month. Smaller items, very inexpensive. I mean, combined, they kind of have a total, but inexpensive individually. However, it's still 10 items. <laughs> so now I'm in negative 26. Let's try to, like, let's try to reverse that. So I did end up with two pans this month. I did speak about them in my Project Level Up videos. If you saw it, then this is not a spoiler. I hit pan in the Avocado Toast Lemon Pepper. This, is, this was my level two, uh, one. Now I'm on level two. I hit pan in this shade right here. So that was exciting. And I also hit pan in the Canyon Palette from Alter Ego. This was my fifth pan in this right here in russet so super pleased and excited to be able to have at least two pans in this month for a month that I wasn't even really trying all that much and I didn't take them with me so they were when I came back and I had I got a good dent on them actually in December before I left so pans it typically would be um half a point each However, I'm gonna be nice to myself this year and I'm gonna give myself a point for them. I already deduct two points for eyeshadow palettes and I do feel like I hit a pan every single month or one or two, whatever. So I know I'm not finishing an item and usually if I finish an item, then it would be a point back in my, in my beauty bank, but I'm gonna be nice to myself this year. And every single pan that I hit is gonna be a point. So that's actually two points back into my collection. So that means that I now have, um, I'm still at a negative, but it means it's less, <laughs> it's less uh, bad than it was. And it's a negative 24, right? So we're still going. I did actually finish two items this month. I finished the Mascara Curl Bounce Mascara, I think it is. I originally rolled this into my um, 50 Shades of Yellow slash Gold for the Fantastic Ladies last year, and that's obviously still ongoing. I just stopped updating it, and I stopped really tracking any of that uh, back in September time. So I did finish the item. It de technically counts towards that project, but I kind of stopped doing that project, unfortunately. So sorry, everybody. But I did finally finish the mascara. And then I also have finished this brow gel. This is the CBD brow gel from 
Primark that I have had for like three or four years. So I wanted to get this out of my collection. It's not technically like finished finished, but it's so old and disgusting and manky. So I'm basically decluttering it and also calling it empty because I have used it a bunch of times over the years. So anyway, I am gonna add these two points back into my beauty bank. So now I'm at a negative, what, 22, something like that. It's still bad. I mean, it's still bad. I'm trying to cheat with my points and it's still bad. So I know, I know, but it's fine. I don't mind. It just means for the next few months, I just need to be a little bit more wary about what I'm buying. Um, normally I don't really buy that much lip products. So I bought quite a lot. I'm not gonna say that I'm not gonna buy any eyeshadow palettes though. So if an eyeshadow palette comes out and I really wanna buy it, I'm gonna go buy it. So I think that's just what's gonna happen. All right, moving on. So normally that would be like the end of the video, bish bash bosh, goodbye. But because I'm gonna do something different this month and also this year, I am gonna be talking about some other things. So one of the things I wanna talk about, I will, probably change what this is every single month but this month straight away I just want to say like what's the eyeshadow palette that I've used the most what is it obviously I'm doing a pan matte palette so you would expect it to be my pan matte palette and you're right it was my Urban Decay Stone Vibes palette so I imagine that every single month this is most likely going to be the palette that I use the most every single month so that's why I probably will switch it out and talk about maybe the eyeshadow I use the most or the eye look that I went for the most or the lip product that I use the most, something like that, a little bit different, like something I really enjoyed this month. So I use this the most by far because it was my Pamela palette and also it was the only eyeshadow palette I took with me to England. So it just made sense. It's pretty compact. It was easy to pack. Nothing happened to it during the travel because it's quite a sturdy, like hard pack. Uh, like packaging. So actually it was probably the perfect palette to take with me. And I got a good head start. I think I used it about 10 times while I was away. I was away for like 14 days. So, um, and then since I've been back, I think I've used it like three times. So it's about 13 times in total that I've used it this month. January is a really long month though. So definitely have been using some other palettes since I've been back and I just kind of taken a back seat. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to show you inside because I want to wait until my pan that palette update. I don't want to spoil that. So you'll have to just wait. But that definitely is the palette that I've used the most this month. Okay, next up, let's talk about beauty items that I have really enjoyed this month. I... I think I've only done a favorites video one time and that was three years ago. I'm not gonna bring it back, but the way that I am bringing it back is talking about it in this video with you right now. So I'm gonna talk about four items. It might be three items next month, it might be one, it might be six, who knows? But today it's just four items that I really just wanna talk about and I've really enjoyed and you know, I just, just if you have them, let me know because it would be it would be fun to talk about them. So the first one I've actually already spoken about, and it is the the Primark primer. I think this is so good and by far one of the best products that I've used this month. I am I I did my expectations were like like tiny tiny for this product. I mean I've I've always like kind of liked some Primark products. They're, they're, they're good for what they are. They're just a couple of pounds and that's it. But this is really nice. This is not Bobbi Brown. Like it doesn't smell like the Bobbi Brown one at all because it has a very distinct smell. This one doesn't smell of anything. It's super lightweight on the skin. It feels really moisturizing. I'm like shocked. I really, I know that Make Me Up Miss has spoken about it over the years and I've always like wanted to pick it up, but I obviously don't live in England and there is a Primark down in Lisbon, but I'm, I don't wanna go an hour away to a capital city just to go to Primark. I just think that's kind of silly. So <laughs> I haven't done that, but I might do it. Um, I wish I'd picked up more because they're so affordable and actually they're really, really nice. So definitely uh, would recommend if you haven't tried it. If you have tried it, then I'm on the bandwagon because I think it's really nice. Okay, next up, we have a nail product. I never talk about nail products on my channel, but this one, ever since I've started trying it and using it, I it's just, it smells amazing for one thing. It smells so nice. So it is the NCL, NCL Treatments Vitamin E Infused Cuticle Oil. 
this is what it looks like. I got this in a beauty box a couple years ago. I can't even remember where from. And I have been doing my nails. I mean, I went like six months without doing my nails, but I've been doing my nails the last couple of months. And that's, I told you not to look at my nails. Don't look at them right now. But this, I feel like has really helped my cuticles. Not that they were bad, but this, I, I, what I do is I always say I clean my nails, I take everything off, and then I put the cuticle oil on, and it just feels so luxurious, and it smells amazing. It smells absolutely out of this world, and I don't know what they've done with it, but it's just amazing. So definitely a product that I wanted to talk about, and now I have. Okay, next up I have a perfume. I barely talk about perfume as well, but I really like this Carolina Herrera perfume. Isn't it stunning? I don't remember what this is called, so I'll put it on the, the, the front here if I remember. It's something kind of sexy, I think. I think it's some, I think it's one. It, it, the, all of her things are these beautiful shoes. I'm just trying to see if they have the name on them. <laughs> Uh, but I got this from my mom. She, she's literally the only person that gives me per perfume and I, I'm very pleased about it because I've asked my partner to get me perfume in the past and he just still doesn't do it. It's just, at this point, I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, so I, when I first got this, I wasn't a huge fan. I think I got it like a year ago, but I've been really enjoying it ever since I got back from England. I've just been spraying it like the last two weeks and honestly, I've just been loving the smell. It's so spicy and kind of fresh, but I think it's that spice that I really like. And I don't I don't know anything about perfume. I don't know the undertones or whatever. The overtones, well, I don't know anything about it or like the different notes. You have like the first note, the second note, whatever. Couldn't tell you a thing about it. That's like the, the most that I know about it. And I'm not gonna get into it either, I don't think but this is very spicy and I like it. So I wanted to talk about it. Okay, and then I have, what else am I talking about? I have one more thing. One more thing that I'm gonna be talking about in terms of a favorite item this month. And it is so nice. Oh my goodness, I am gonna definitely buy this again. This was actually a gift. So I got two boxes from Stylevana and I've been slowly testing them out. I got one in November and one in December and they very kindly sent me loads of skincare. And obviously, yes, it's to talk about on my channel, but I have the products to test out myself and I will tell you if I like them or not. And this one is by far the nicest item that I've ever tried from Stylevana or any of the brands I've tried. And it's also the nicest cream, like a night like night cream or day cream, whatever, that I have ever tried that I can think of. Like, I can't think of anything that's nicer than this. It is the I'm From Mugwort Cream. So the brand is I'm From, and the cream is Mugwort Cream. Weirdest name, concept, whatsoever. Um, I wasn't familiar with the brand, but I have been looking at it and you can even get it on Beauty Bay. Um, you might be able to get it on Sephora, I'm not entirely sure. But this is so stunning. I've only had it like a month and I've already used this much of it. I like, I'm really going through it really fast. I'm like halfway through it. I love this. I took it to England, so it was the only cream that I had. So I come back, I have been testing out a couple more that they've sent me, but this is by far the nicest product that they've ever sent me or that I own that I've tried. So, and I've tried most of the products so far. So I would say if you're gonna buy anything or try anything, it's gonna be this one. I do have a link down below if you wanna grab it or grab it anywhere else that has nothing to do with me. Just try this, I think it's so nice. I even have the Charlotte Tilbury Night Cream, which is like over a hundred pounds if you get like the full size. I have a little mini sample and that is nowhere near as nice as this. This is so much nicer. So if I'm gonna scream about anything, it's gonna be this product. All right, so we've come to the end of the beauty part of the video. Now we're just gonna talk really quickly about what movies I've been watching, what TV shows I've been watching, and also what songs and artists I've been listening to this month. Okay, so in terms of movies, I am on Letterboxd and I'm really trying to uh, get more into it. So I only watched three movies this month, which actually is quite a lot because I really, really don't watch movies anymore. I used to be such a movie buff and I watch, I would watch movies all the time. And as 
as dorky as this sounds, I had a spreadsheet and I had like a tracking system. Before you would do it online, I did that all. I did that all back in the day. So yeah, that's me. Hello, that is me. I am the problem. I am, I know. Anyway, so I watched three movies. One of them I watched with my mom when I was in England. Um, we were just like struggling what to watch one night. And so we put on Queen Pins. This was with Kristen Bell and a few other people, like Vince Vaughn was in it randomly. It was silly. It was based on some, like loosely based on something that happened of to the extent of what they spoke about, but basically these two women um, are neighbors and they come up with the idea of stealing a bunch of coupons, like for, you know when you get the free coupons randomly, they come up with the idea of stealing these, stealing the coupons from the uh, from Mexico where they have the, the factory and then they sell them online, you know, and they just make millions because obviously couponing is a big thing. Uh, so yeah, that is what the movie was. It was very silly. I gave it two out of five stars. I don't think it was all that great. I think there were definitely silly moments, but it was just a little like at the end. Like, I don't know, it just, it wasn't as good as it could have been. It could have been a lot funnier and goofier, but um, I always feel like, with, like that with movies and they just, they always let me down, they always let me down. So. That one I gave two out of five. So yeah, if you've seen it, let me know. And then I also watched Lift with Kevin Hart. I watched that when we when I came back uh, with my partner. We watched that on Netflix a couple weeks ago now. Feels like a lifetime ago, but it was a couple of weeks ago now. And that's just a silly, it's a silly heist movie. You know, they, they're just thieves and the government wants them to steal from this bad guy and they have to steal it on an airplane airplane and it's just silly and the concept is so ridiculous it, it does kind of feel like it was built in an ai generator and then the movie producers were like this would be great if you put kevin hart in there or some other guys you know we could have like explosions and stuff. you know i can just like see movie executives thinking that way and then obviously getting the money for it, selling it to Netflix or whatever. It just didn't seem like a human being made this movie or wrote the movie. It was just kind of really silly and ridiculous. A lot of green screens as well and CGI. I gave that a two, and a two out of five as well. I didn't think it was very good. So the best movie that I watched was the last one and it was Killers of the Flower Moon. Oh my goodness. Now, this was a good movie in my mind because of the what it was about. And I think it was really well done, really well acted and executed. And I did really find it fascinating and interesting to watch. However, it was three and a half hours long. Martin Scorsese doesn't know how to do short movies. He loves these really three plus hours long. And I, I don't have that time to sit down and just literally do nothing and I don't have the attention span to watch a three and a half hour movie. You know, it's, it's just not in me. I have stuff to do. <laughs> so me and my partner, we started watching it and we watched it in two days. We watched half of it one night and then we finished it another night. I don't think he liked it very much because it's just the type of movie that I would imagine he's bored watching it. It's not like full of action and all that stuff, but I really liked it. Like I actually had, like my grandfather like was Native American, right? I have a lot of that heritage in my family blood. So for me, it was really fascinating seeing what happened in the 1950s. Like I, I don't have any ties to these tribes, but basically in the movie, and it is based on real, real, things that happen in the world, right? This actually happened, as disgusting as it is, but a lot of white men would come and marry these Native American ladies for their land and their wealth because their land, they're, they're, they had basically oil on their land. And obviously money, money, money speaks. Basically a lawless land of white, horrible men just praying for their wealth and their land. Like, oh my goodness. I, I just, I thought it was a really good movie. And I honestly, like when I saw the trailers for it, I thought Leonardo DiCaprio was gonna be a good guy. 
he's not a good guy. And I was like, oh shit, he's not a good guy in this movie. So I really enjoyed it. Um, it just it, it just showed the true nature of how horrible, how horrible, you know, people are and how people just really only care about money and the lengths that they will go to get that money. It was really well done, but it didn't need to be three and a half hours long. I'll, I'll give you that, but I gave it a five star. I thought it was really good. Something else that I wanted to talk about was TV shows that I'm watching. So there's just two that I want to mention, but Love Island is one of them. Love Island All Stars. They're all in South Africa. This is the UK version where they have past contestants or people who came on the show in the last like 10 seasons and then bringing some of them back. At the first I wasn't all too keen because a lot of them already knew each other or had sort of flirtations or situations or had hooked up basically but as it's gone on I actually really enjoyed it and Messy Mitch is definitely messy. Uh, I have missed a couple of episodes though so I definitely need to catch up on like what's happened recently but definitely a show that I can binge. I, d I feel like that show is really good in the midway point and then you know at the beginning it's kind of boring it gets really good and like silly and juicy and then towards the end when they're all trying to win and they're all lovey-dovey it gets super boring again so I usually don't watch the end of this show but right now it's like at that juicy point so I'm definitely all in. Another show that I've been watching is with my partner we just recently started watching this a few days ago and it's The Brothers Sun and this is on Netflix. It is so Fun. It's basically a uh, Chinese mafia uh, meets silly Californian sort of vibes and, and it's just it's very goofy and kind of slapstick but also like there's some serious undertones and there's like blood and, and, and some you know not gore but you know it's 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 silly but it's just not silly like there's definitely body parts and stuff like that but and blood and uh, whatnot but I think this is really fun. This is basically about um, a son and a father who live in Taipei and they're in the, uh, like, their mafia. And for whatever reason, I don't want to, like, spoil it if you haven't watched it, but the son has to come back or, like, go find his mother and his younger brother in California because the family has been split up for several years. Uh, it's basically to protect the mother and the, the the younger brother and he like the younger brother had no idea of his family like the, he doesn't know who his father really is he knows of his brother but he doesn't know really what he's been doing like most of his life or for a good chunk of his life so he's like been like thrown into this world and he's like this big nerd and he just wants he's in medical school and he does improv it's just so silly but but fun and i've been really enjoying that so if you've watched it let me know but i've we're like on episode five and we're just enjoying it. All right, and then quickly, just on my music, so my top track songs this month is Tattoos by Renee Rapp. I couldn't even tell you what that song is, to be honest. I can't even like think of what that is, but I, apparently I listen to it a lot. And I also listen to Good Life by One Republic a lot. An oldie but a goodie. And I'm, I did actually listen to quite a lot of One Republic this month, not, not intentionally. I don't know really what happened. I think I was listening to a, a 2000 mix or a 2010 mix and it they just popped up a lot. Um, one new artist that I listened to um, was Ren. I, I think, I don't think I ever had ever heard of Ren. And then I saw his uh, I Am Ren video on YouTube and I was amazed and I watched it and then I watched reactions of it and then reactions of reactions and reactions and I was like, oh my gosh. So I actually ended up listening to him on Spotify. So he was one that I listened to quite a lot this month. I wouldn't say that his music is actually my type of music, but that particular song, like like his performance of that song, amazing. If you haven't seen it, go look at it. Very, very talented person. Really hugely talented person. Um, but yeah, I listened to him. He was the new artist of the month for me. And then I also, somebody else that I listened to quite a lot, but I think I remember listening to them in December as well, is We Three. Um, they have some really, really heartbreaking songs, and then they have some really like upbeat poppy songs. But yeah, they kind of ca ca caught me off guard. 
Um, so I listened to them as well. Love Hosea, listened to him quite a lot this last month. Listened to Matt Hansen, I do love my country music. And uh, I listened to James Bay and Vance Joy and the Lumineers quite a bit too. So those are my top listens of the month. That is my monthly wrap up of January. I might do something a little bit different for February, like a different type of thing. But let me know if you liked the video and hopefully you come back. Thank you so much and I'll see you all next time. Bye.